Mountain Garden Centre for March's edition of Green Finger Tips. And here we have our own garden guru, Mark Smith. Morning, Liz. So what are we going to look at today? I see there's a lot of herbs. Yeah, we've got uh, a really, really good selection of uh, herbs at the moment. It's that time of year and most people think it's a little bit too cold. It's yeah, really cold today. Yeah. But uh, there's plenty of hardy herbs that you can start on, you know, that are really, really tough against frost, against right. snow okay. and all the wet. So, I mean, the selection that we've got here, I mean, we've, uh, we've got the garden mint here. So uh, probably one of the best known herbs that we've got in this country, uh, you know, great for your lamb. Uh, must have it in a pot, though. Yeah. If you have it in the garden, if you have it planted oh, right. in the garden with the with your your flowering plants or even in a in a vegetable plot, it overtakes the whole garden. It's very very strong growing. Once it gets its roots into the ground, it literally overtakes and you you'll be cursing oh, um, right. and digging to it. So my tip is to have it in a in a container, keep right. the uh, roots contained and just just nip little mm. bits off as and, as and when you need it. But what you must do with all the herbs, whether it's uh, mint or, or lavender or thyme, or mm. just keep nipping it out every yeah. now and again. It encourages lush, soft growth, which are the best tasting uh, yeah. bits, uh, but it makes the plant really nice and bushy. If you leave it and leave it, it goes very, very leggy yeah, and woody, yeah, and it doesn't yeah. have any taste at all. Even if you're not going to use it that weekend and it's in the growing period, mm. I would just trim it off, snip little bits off, just to keep it in, uh, in, in check. So mint there, really great herb, uh, smells fantastic yeah, as well, got yeah. lots and lots of uses. Obviously the mint sauce is a traditional one, but you can use use it in mint teas and... Uh, and uh, oh, true, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's, uh, in actual fact, if you look on the back, yeah. it's got various different uses. Yeah. So you can have it with your vegetables, uh, with your um, new potatoes, mint sauce, have it in drinks, and it's just such a, a versatile uh, yeah. herb. But there's probably things that you wouldn't yeah. even... Uh, uh, think of. Uh, again, with the selection we've got, we've got quite a vast selection of uh, herbs and it's only just started. You know, we've only got uh, the ones that are hardy for this oh, time right. of year. A little bit later on we'll have the softer ones. So we haven't got any basil? We haven't got any basil. That's one of the softest ones and yeah. one of the ones that most people oh. uh, struggle with. Uh, if you have any kind of cold wind, it, it damages the leaves, it, they look oh. brown, they look tatty and it can kill the plant if you get any very late frost. So we tend to have it uh, a little bit later on when it's around about the bedding season when you start to get all the bedding plants in where it's right. nice and warm and there's no chance to kill it. Yeah. Um, we'll, on later programmes, I'll show you all the different types of basils we do. We do eight different varieties. Oh, wow. Most people think of the sweet basil that you yeah. use in cooking, yeah. but we actually use eight different... We eight? have eight, eight okay. different varieties. Um, this is one that most people don't uh, know about. This is sweet wood rough. Now, right. it's quite a... It's quite a funny one, this one. It is an evergreen plant. Yeah. Uh, its use is to smoke food. So you can smoke cheese, fish, uh, meats. Um, you can pile it up, dry, dry it, and then smoke yeah. the fish Does or the meat. Does that actually smell then? Or? Um, it's got like a, if you taste the leaf, it's yeah. got like a straw type taste. Oh. But then when you smoke it, it's got like a quite a hickory smell oh, uh, right. and taste. And it's beautiful for smoking uh, um, different uh, foods. Also, it's got a great use. Um, if you've got a spot in the garden that's very, very shaded under trees, you can plant this as a ground oh, cover right. plant. It doesn't get any higher than that. has a little pretty white flower on, but oh. then you can harvest it and smoke. You can use it on yeah. the barbecue, along with your coals or even a gas barbecue. Oh. Get it to smoke and it'll smoke your, oh, right. your barbecue if you give it a really nice uh, taste. Uh, this is uh, thyme, this is Archer's Gold. Now, yeah. Archer's Gold is one of the brightest ones. You can use it like traditional thyme, yeah. but it's got this beautiful bright yellow leaf and it's evergreen mm. as well. So. A lot of herbs tend to be just plain green leaf, yeah, um, yeah. and this just adds a little bit of interest if you are uh, developing a herb garden. Just mm. breaks up the uh, the monotonous of having. So has it got a different smell to it? No, it's it's got the same sort of smell. Like I say, you can use it. It's very very flat growing, so yeah. you can use it on the edges of borders, and it's a very ornamental yeah. uh, time as well. So you can use it as part of yeah. your borders in the rest okay. of the garden. Um, 
got uh, parsley good now. Good old parsley. Good old parsley. Here at Mark Eaton, we've got a very, very good tea room and they like to make all their <laughs> yeah. own food. Yeah. And I said to them, what herbs would you like me to grow? And they, they gave me a great big long list of herbs that they want to grow. And I said, oh, you've not mentioned parsley. Mm. And I said, surely you want moss curl parsley? He said, no. And I said, why, why not moss curl parsley? He said, that's so 70s. You know, really? you know how they use uh, little sprigs yeah. of, um, of moss curl parsley as decoration? Yeah. And they said, no, that's 70s. They want to use flat leaf parsley, which I haven't got at the oh, moment, right. but flat leaf parsley uh, to chop up and actually yeah. put in the meals, but they don't use parsley as a decoration, which I didn't know. Oh, so it's nice really learning those not. things, but yeah. parsley, nice, uh, fresh okay. flavour. Rosemary again, great uh, Rosemary, smell, great yeah. for your, your lamb um, and uh, very hardy, good growing and again in its own right, a nice beautiful bright blue flower makes a really attractive plant in the garden. Ooh. So let it grow, let it get quite large but remember to take just the very soft tips of yeah. the plant uh, okay. when you're harvesting. Um, Lavender, uh, lots of different varieties of lavender. This is Hidcote, which is quite a tough uh, oh. a variety. Um, See, I grew some and it, it did die, so yeah. well, I don't know. Yeah, if you don't, usually uh, lavender dies if uh, the ground that you've put in it was uh, hard, clayy. Oh, yes, it is. Ah, it needs. Oh. Now, lavender and rosemary and thyme are Mediterranean herbs, oh. and the interesting thing, they want lots and lots of Drainage, drainage. Really, and they do better in poor okay. soils, believe it or not. So you oh. don't want to feed them, you just want them in very ri uh, ri rich, poor soils, uh, very well drained, lots of stone, lots of sand in there, oh. to the point where you think it's too much, and they do very, very well. Um, so would they be better in a pot then? Or? <laughs> Per lavender does extremely well in the pot because there's usually times where you forget to water it yeah. and it dries out so it tends to do better and it works harder if it's drying out and oh. feels like it's going to struggle. It puts out lots more flour. If it's struggling, okay. it'll put out lots more flour. So you can use the I lavender... I should try that again, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, put it in a pot, looks really attractive, great decorative plant, great smell, yeah. uh, along with the, the benefits of the cooking, because you can use lavender in cooking, but you can also uh, use the flowers in uh, in cakes. Yeah. You can use it as decoration, not too much, because it tastes soapy, soapy, but the odd yeah. flower is, is lovely. Um, but you've got the medicinal purposes of lavender, where you can have them by your pillow and it helps you sleep better. It's one that you really must have in the garden, whether you're using it as yeah. a, in cooking or, or not. This is one of my favourites. This is lemon-scented oh, uh, thyme. Yeah. Uh, I use this a lot in my cooking because I do a lot of cooking. And it's got, if you can, if you, if yeah. I crunch it all up and break it all up, if you smell that, it's got a beautiful smell of lemon. Strong. It is yeah. strong. And But if you use this with chicken, yeah. it tastes absolutely fantastic. Oh. So but you wouldn't need a lot, would you? You wouldn't need a lot, no. only just a few sprigs, just the very uh, yeah. tips. Uh, put that with your chicken, tastes amazing. Oh. Abs even a very, very cheap, uh, chicken breast from a supermarket you put something like uh, thyme in there and it just changes yeah, it completely makes yeah. it uh, taste uh, oh, fantastic and again a decorative uh, plan evergreen yeah. lots of flowers so you can use it in the borders and the and the rockeries uh, but I tend to use this for cooking it's just uh, an incredible uh, herb oh, that's good yeah. so we've got we've got plenty of um, herbs at the moment we've got the fennels we've got the uh, the thymes but within a month the range will double completely. Yeah. Um, things like uh, dill, um, sorrel, uh, chervil, um, um, borage, oh. uh, horseradish, all those things oh, yeah. are coming in uh, a little bit uh, <coughs> later on, within uh, the next uh, couple of weeks, and uh, the range will expand. And it's amazing how you start to see uh, people experimenting with herbs, yeah. and they'll pick, oh, I haven't seen that, like, mm. um, garlic chives you know people think oh, of chives yeah and you can get garlic chives so they try those out we've also got another one coming in called welsh onion oh, um, okay now welsh onion if you're not familiar with the welsh onion is the one where they slice it very thinly and it does little tiny green rings on oh. tops of soups oh, and it yes, just adds that yes. extra uh, pizzazz to a soup and just a plain ordinary tin tomato soup put the welsh onion on top incredible oh, uh, so it's well worth experimenting with herbs and they are very versatile we've got in the displays here yeah. uh, a number of herbs in pots that do extremely well in mm. pots 
uh, very easy to look after. Um, like I say, the lavenders and rosemaries are particularly good if you forget to water them. Yeah. Um, okay. But they do, uh, you can self contain them in a, in a pot if you haven't got a garden big enough to. It would be nice on the windowsill. Absolutely, yeah. you do window boxes, yeah. you do hanging baskets uh, with herbs in. Uh, there's a great uh, herb called Indian mint, which you can right. use in a hanging basket that trails down. Oh. And, it, and for me, it's got the very best. Uh, scent of mint uh, around Indian mint and it looks like a training plant with white flowers beautiful and again we'll cover that later mm. on in, in future programs of uh, green fingered tips so great time get you uh, doing the herbs now there's lots of things to do but you um, once the uh, flowering plants start to come in, people tend to think, forget yeah. about the herbs. Yeah. So try and do it now. It's a great uh, thing to do at this time of year and really get yeah. the ball rolling. If you start putting them in now, well, they'll get establish. get a lot of uh, use out of them as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and once you plant a lot of these, yeah. not all of them, but a lot of these, these will come back year after, year year, after year and they'll get wow, better and better it. and better. Yeah. So it's just a, a, a quick to job uh, to do. Oh, this looks really good, Mark. Yeah. What have you done with this? Well, the restaurant wanted some herbs growing for a tea room restaurant, so I thought I'd create uh, this uh, oh, herb right. planter. And believe it or not, this is made out of an old pallet. <laughs> so I've got something like um, this. Yeah. Uh, we've got plenty of old pallets around. And they're all I've simply done. Yeah. It's a great project for the weekend if you want to attempt this yourself, uh, Liz. All you have to do is take off the slats of the wood and then reattach them underneath here to create your little trough for the uh, herbs to be planted inside here. Right. And what I've done, instead of it looking still like a pal uh, pal an old pallet, what I've done is uh, painted it with... Uh, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Um, well, all I've done is paint it with this new uh, fence stain uh, black, care, yeah. black, which makes the uh, plant stand, stand out really, well. really well. Yeah. Um, but it's got a five-year protective uh, thing, and it's and it's black, and it uh, wow. makes a f interesting feature. It does. And it's just kind of up uh, recycling uh, uh, products, and uh, like I say, we've got a, we've got a glut of pallets here, so it's just uh, using something like this. But this took me uh, less than uh, an hour to do, including the paint, paint drying, and anybody can do this. Uh, and it's a, like I say, it's a, it's a great project for the weekend That's to well do. Worth trying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you could put like a trellis at the back, or you can have climbing yeah. plants in there. You can use it for bedding plants. Yeah. yeah any any winter bedding or summer bedding uh, plants, you can do that um, in. And uh, or you could even make it as a uh, as a spice rack in your kitchen if you uh, <laughs> you've got a big enough really? uh, <laughs> kitchen. Uh, but it's Whatever just takes your fancy. Yeah, but it's, but... with a pallet being uh, as a. Uh, has got a frame already. Yeah. It's very easy to do. So you're not using any extra. And uh, no, you're just, you're just using reusing the, the same wood. Yeah. It's uh, got vi very. You can pick up free pallets from most places, mm. and uh, and like I say, create this uh, this uh, this herb planter. So you'd be wanting to know about jobs of the month this month. Uh, the best jobs that you could be doing at this time of year are starting to uh, do win lawn winter care, uh, spiking the lawn thoroughly, yeah. adding sand that helps with drainage in the lawn so stops uh, getting uh, moss forming on the lawn and applying a fertiliser like sulphate of iron that kills any moss that's already in the lawn. Right. That's a really good job at this time of year because we have had such a wet uh, uh, winter and any winter flowering plants that are finished now cut them quite hard back or if it's a, a relatively new plant just taking about a third yeah. off the plant and uh, and letting that recover but uh, so pruning back spiking the lawn spiking the lawn is very very important it pays dividends for mm -hmm. later on in the year so those uh, two uh, jobs are, are perfect for this uh, for this time of year and also if you haven't done already there's still time to put in any winter bedding plants uh, just to judge the garden up and create a lot more color in the garden and make it nice and cheery and that will lead you on to the summer bedding a little bit later on All right, okay so how do the viewers get in contact with you well the the best way to get in contact with me if they want a, an instant answer for any problems they've got is contact me here at Marquee 
Eaton Garden Centre on the, uh, the phone number that's on the screen at the moment. Mm -hmm. You could email uh, Burton TV yeah. on their email address. Uh, you can look us up on Facebook, on Mark Eaton's uh, Facebook page. If you type in Mark Eaton Garden Centre in Facebook search bar, you'll find our page and the Tea Room page. And if you've got any burning questions you need to ask, you can answer, ask those on there and I will reply. And like I say, any emails that you've sent into Burton TV, that can be questions, photos or videos. The videos have got to be in MPEG format. Yeah. Uh, we can answer those on future uh, Green Finger Tips programmes. So. That's really interesting, Mark. Well, there's plenty to do for March. And uh, that's the end of How Green We Forget Tips. Um, we'll see you next time. OK. <coughs> so, I guess you'll be wanting to know about jobs of the month. <laughs> what? what? So, you'll be wanting to know about uh, jobs of the... <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> so, I guess you'll be wanting to know uh, the jobs of the month. Uh, so, the what you can be doing now no, is... You, <laughs> you were trying not to laugh. And... Go. So, you'll be wanting to know about jobs... That... <laughs> <laughs> You're making me laugh now, and I'm trying to be Mr Professional today. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Bloody mate, you cried. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Oh, we, we are going. We are going. We are going. Right. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. There you go. Come here. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop. Here we go. Right. Okay. Look at this. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs>